OK, now we are finally through pointers. Let's now get on to classes. And we can get back to some kind of financial type stuff uh, as we've done uh, before in the past. OK, the first thing I think we need to do is we need to create, uh, like we did with functions a while back. Let, let's get rid of all this again, as we've been doing. Now, you might think, well, why I keep getting rid of all this stuff? Isn't that a bit of a terrible thing to have to keep doing? Well, yes, it is. So why, not, why don't we encapsulate all those bits of code I've been doing in separate files and call those things classes? So if I'm doing something to do with bonds, I'll have a bond class file. If I'm doing something with options, I'll have an option class file. If I'm doing something with FX, I'll have an FX file. And I'll keep all my bits and pieces for options, FX, bonds in all the requisite files. And the beauty of classes is they're a bit like, I think of a class as being a blueprint for a car. So what we're going to do in a second is we're going to create a bond. I mean, none of this will work at the moment because I haven't defined anything. We're going to create a bond class and we're going to say, I want something that's a bond and I want it to be stored in this variable here. That's it. What that's going to be is a key to a, to a thing. Um, the program will go off to a bond class, which is like a blueprint for a bond. Actually, think of it, think of it as being a car. So we'll, it could be a car. Car key. So I've got a blueprint for a car. And when I call, and I say, I go to the car um, dealer and I say, I'd like a car, please. What the car dealer does is goes off to a factory, builds you a car, encapsulates things so that you and then gives you a car key, and then we use the car key to access the car. Now the car has an interface. The interface is accelerator pedal, brake pedal, door handle, uh, ignition. And as long as you know that interface, you don't need to know what's in the engine, how the accelerator works. It could be an electric engine underneath, it could be a petrol engine, it could be a gas engine, it could be a uranium fuel engine. All you need to do is know how to use the interface to accelerate a pedal, which is available via car key. And car key also gives you access to the brake pedal. I'm stretching the analogy too far here, but <laughs> owning Oh yeah, the car key in the old-fashioned days is you put the key in to uh, to unlock the car and obviously car key gives you access to the ignition. Now, the thing to remember about the car, that's a class. It's a blueprint for a new car. This is an object. It's a car key which gives you access to a real flesh and blood metal and plastic and glass car. Now you can have one car class, one blueprint for a car. You can have 50 million car keys to 50 million separate cars. And we're going to store that in a couple of files called the car files. One of the files will define the interface. That's going to be the, um, uh, the header file. And another file will, will contain all of the hard, not hard coded, all of the, 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 the engine parts and how the engine works, how the oil works, how the gears work and everything else. That's going to be the C++ file. So that's a blueprint for a thing called a car. You get back an object, a car key from the car salesman. Um, the car company have built you an object, a separate object, separate from all other cars like that, your car. You will have an interface to that object which you access via that thing there and then in the C++ code all of the bits inside the car which are encapsulated inside the engine compartment which you do not need to see it could be an electric engine could be radioactive engine I don't know what kind of an engine um, that's where you keep all that stuff there so as long as a programmer inside your main program you know the interface as long as you know how to create your car, you don't need to know any of this stuff at all. 
Anyway, we're not going to use cars because this is learned um, finance C++. So we're going to create a bond. Now, notice I'm getting an error here because no such file exists. So what I need to do then is I need to create a couple of files. The first file I need to create is the header file. This is the public, this is the kind of interface which you would sell to your, uh, you know, your financial company who are buying your code off you. So they'll see the header file so they can see the interface. What they won't see is the compiled um, C++ file which will compile down to executable code. Anyway, so what I need to do then is I need to create a new uh, a new file. So it's going to be a header file. I'm going to call it bond. Here we are, bond H. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. So this is defining brakes and accelerators and door handles and so on. Now, what I need to put in here then is I need to um, put a couple of things in here. I need to say this is a new thing called class bond. It's got some public elements which the world outside can see. These public interfaces which the world outside can see. Now this is a special notation with a semi with a colon on the. It's not a semicolon. It's a, it's a colon. Oh, I'm just going to go with where Xcode wants to put this, which is right up against the uh, the line there. Um, that's all I need for the moment, to be honest. Now, I might have some private things in there as well. Little p. But I'm not going to put anything in there at the moment. Uh, we don't need to put anything in there at the moment. We'll come back to this in a second. Okay, that's that so far. I also need the C++ file. So, um, where's that going to be? A new file. And it's going to be a C++ class file. I'm going to call it bond. It's going to be bonds.cpp. There we are, bond.cpp. Now, it includes the header file I've just created. You can see that there. I also need to put that into main, so Oop, I don't know what that is. Let's close that. Um, let's see where my programs are. Okay, oh yeah, main CPP there. So let me put that in here inside the main program. There we go. And I also need to put it in here as well. Oh, I've got it in there. So that's already in there. Now, I don't need to do much else there. I, do, I will put a couple of other things in here just so that we're, uh, we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Include IO stream and uh, using namespace standard. Okay, let's go back to main again. Uh, unused variable, we're not doing anything with this. We're not doing anything with this, but so far we, uh, it does, it should run. Everything's fine, build failed. Unused variable, pass issue after class. Let's see where that is. Expect it after class. Oh, I didn't put it in. Ah. Let's run that. Build succeeded. The problem is, it, it's, it's not really doing a lot at the moment. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to the main program. I'm not doing anything with this. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go back to the header file and build a constructor. Now at the moment a default constructor is being used but I'm going to be explicit here and say I want a special thing called bond to exist. This is in the header file remember. And C++ goes oh okay so 
when I'm in class bond, if I see something, a function, which has nothing being returned, and which has the same name, and which has the right number of parameters as the main program, notice I'm not, uh, I'm not sending any parameters in here at all, then what I will do is I will run that bit of code as a constructor. You might want to think of this as being like in the previous lesson, a new thing. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to declare that constructor. This is like an order going from the car dealer and going off to the car manufacturer. So you go to, you go to a Mercedes dealership and you say, I want a Mercedes. And I say, well, what colour do you want it? What, what, what engine size do you want it? You don't specify anything. You just say, I want a Mercedes. Well, the blueprint will go, OK, we'll give him a bog standard Mercedes. So it's probably going to be silver. It's probably going to be two litres and a few other things. And um, we, we're just going to give him a standard Mercedes. Nothing specified by the buyer whatsoever. And now we can go into the CPP program and we can write the bond um, constructor class. Now the first thing we do is say we want this to be in the bond class and then we're going to have the bond function. C++ goes, ah, there's, no, there's nothing here, there's no int, there's no void, etc. And it's got the same name as the class, therefore it's a constructor. And now everything's looking legal, isn't it? But when I did that mistake there. Okay. Now inside here, I can put a little. I'm just going to put a little bit of a um, little bit of code here, saying I have created a basic bond, um, a default bond. Oh. Good. Good. Now, let's go back to the main program. Let's run it. Now we're getting at that message. So what happened there? We said to this program, please include all the stuff with bonds. Create me a bond. Give me a key to that bond. Now, when we created the bond, see, plus plus went off to this and went, oh, OK, what's the default constructor? The default constructor we call bond. No parameters were given. This is the class bond, this is the constructor called bond. So run into here and print this message. Okay. Now, what use is a bond without um, anything you know special? What we can do next is we can create some special private variables. Now we could make these public variables. I'll just do that for a minute. I can say my bond principle um, double bond uh, principle and I can um, let's have a couple of others rates sorry double rates and I can have what else can I have double years to maturity and payment type so char payment type and what we'll do is we'll say A is for annual S is for semi annual well I'll have Q as well so Q is for quarterly and we can make all these things public that's fine it's actually terrible but uh, We'll see what we're going to do in a second with this. Now what we can do inside the bond um, constructor, we can set those things. That nothing's being supplied here, so give them the basic, you know, simple, simple bond. So those class variables which I've made public, I'm going to set them here explicitly. Principal equals 100. Um, rate equals 10% or 0.1 years to maturity 
equals one and payment type equals A for annual. So when I buy a car, I get an engine, make the engine size 100 centiliters. I get seats, give them four seats. I get um, maximum speed, maximum speed 100 kilometers an hour. I get a type, make it the economy version. So each object that's created gets these variables automatically, just like when I order a car, and I've made these things public. Now that's pretty shocking. Why is it shocking? Because I can access those variables inside the main program because they're public and this thing can see them. That's like me being able to reach into the engine and change in the engine size directly without any checking. So what I can do now is I can print out the uh, basic bond dot principle is equal to basic bond dot principle and it should come out what did I say a hundred and now it's coming out as 100 because the main program is reach using the car key and we've said you can reach into the engine and change the engine uh, gasoline petrol capacity and that that's no good so what we're going to do then is we're going to go back into here and we're going to make these so the h file we're going to make those things private not public now only the car itself or the bond itself can see these things. The main program can't see them. So I've broken the program now. If I run this program now, it should fail. So we've got a little warning message. Failed. It's a private member. That's the way we should all be. Now there's going to be certain things that we can change. You know, you can in a car you can change the wing mirrors a little bit. So there's going to be some occasionally variables which are public. But 999 times out of a thousand, the um, the elements inside here will be private. Now if I want to see or set or change these variables I think we'll do that in the next lesson. When what we're going to do is we're going to talk about setting principle, getting principle and also setting up a, another bond constructor which takes parameters to change these variables. And eventually we'll get to setting up a subroutine or a function inside the class, which gives us back a bond price, uh, which, uh, which is the whole point of this class um, uh, as I'm writing it. Anyway, see you next time.